Hey guys, we're Flying Casual. I'm James Rosile, joined with... Josh, from the Rebel Scum Den of Stupids. From the, Re- the Rebel Scum Podcast Den of Stupids. The domino effect yes, of it all. Yes, that's the new channel name. That's what we're doing. <laughs> that's how it's going to have to be over there. So we're going to talk about uh, another thing that probably will get you a lot of hate yep. on this one. It's... The, it's Captain Phasma. We're just going to go right into it. We're going to talk about Captain Phasma today because yeah. Phasma is a character who I think before The Force Awakens came out got a lot of love. And then after The Force Awakens kind of, and then after it came out, I think there were, it was split. I think it was split down the middle. There were people who were very disappointed in her and then people who were neutral, like, well, you know, whatever. Yeah. You know, like that's it. Like, and I think everybody can agree the design is very cool for Captain Phasma. So, Josh. What are your opinions? What were your thoughts going into Force Awakens? Did you know her role would be as minor as it was? And no. then what were your overall thoughts? I definitely didn't know her role was going to be as minor as it was. I will say this, though. Like, so, the beginning of that movie, you see her pretty quick. So you see her pretty quick, and, I, and you do kind of have that connection where you're like, oh, that's that character I saw in the toys and the posters and all this stuff. Um, I gotta be honest, I didn't necessarily notice how underutilized she was until like a second, third movie, because I think the narrative in that movie was actually really well paced, and they probably cut out what they cut out, apparently, you know, they cut some stuff from her, they probably cut that out because it interfered with that narrative, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So, I, I think she was definitely underutilized, but she's, it, she has like the boba of the Boba Fett effect going on where like her design is so cool and people love it so much that now Disney film would or Disney and Lucasfilm would be dumb not to capitalize on that. You know, my feeling on the Boba Fett thing is when the movie was coming out, I kept hearing she's the Boba Fett of this. She's a Boba Fett of this. You're not going to get much of her, but she's cool looking and you're going to want the toys. And the difference between that and Boba Fett to me is Boba Fett just kind of happened. You know, they designed Boba Fett. He looked cool. They threw him in a cartoon. They threw him in the movie. And all of a sudden, his he exploded. I don't know if he exploded right away or not, because I was, you know, not born when that all happened. But eventually, down the line, he blew up. Everybody's obsessed with Boba Fett. Whereas Stasma, you're telling us that that's what's going to happen. You know, like it's almost like it's forced. And when you watch into the toy stores, Phasma was everywhere. Like they wanted you to own Captain Phasma. I have the Phasma Elite Series figure, and it is super cool looking, and I love it. And I, I and we're going to get into Episode Eight, The Last Jedi, just a little bit. Yeah. I'm really looking forward to her having a role now and not continue the Boba Fett streak. Right. That's the thing, right? So, because I think the the big thing that made us want to talk about this was an interview with Bunny and Christie, right? Where she was kind of talking about how Ryan Johnson and her had these talks on set for The Last Jedi. They're expounding upon this character, really getting in the head of it. I mean, we've got the Phasma comic now, the, the Phasma novel now. So, there's a lot of stuff. Uh, with regards to her as an actual character that's kind of being, you know, played out there. You know, one of the things for me was interesting that when we were at Celebration, we heard kind of Mark Hamill say, well, even if they don't give you all the backstory, you as an actor make the backstory. Mm -hmm. Because, and not that that's canonical, like I'm not saying that anything that the actors come up with in their heads is canon, but what I'm saying is like, part of their job, they need to fully understand the motivations and so they come up with a backstory to kind of fill that out. And so I think that what she is describing in that article is that process in Ryan's ability to listen to her ideas and incorporate them in a canonical way. Because I just, like, Ryan had his hand in a lot of, like, ancillary canon stuff, most notably Bloodline. And so... I think that whatever he set up and establishes in that movie becomes kind of like the law for these characters, especially the ones that want to be utilized like Phasma, as we move forward, right? So yeah. that that's pretty interesting, and you know, we're hoping that there's something really, really good here. I've heard that they're gonna you're gonna see like a veracity in her, and just like she's going to be a badass, and you're gonna see why she is so respected in the first order and i want to see her with that spear just messing people up man. yeah that's that thing looks awesome the pose that was just released last week i believe i yep. was i was away without the internet when all of this stuff dropped and i yep. came home to a to a pile of pictures to sort through and articles to read that looks cool I, 
You know, I, I don't know if you've heard this, but on, on Collider, John Schnepp said when he first saw it, he said that he wished Phasma was the TR-8R, like that character. Oh, yeah, I've heard like that. that. And that's a popular thing. Like People are saying that in Reddit and all these different things. And like they're really like, well, that's such a missed opportunity. And you know what? Maybe it was. Like, J.J. even admits that there were missed opportunities in the movie, mostly not hugging Chewie at the end and all that. You know, there's, or rather, you know, the the snub of Chewy and other things he's, yeah. he's he's brought this up he's like look when you look back at it for sure there's missed opportunities but I have to say this too as a side act bar um, my current deck that I play in uh, Star Wars Destiny is a nines deck it utilizes that character FN ninety nine yeah twenty one ninety nine so I if they hadn't have just made this random character I wouldn't be using this awesome card in this game right now so. Yeah, see, I don't know if it's, a, for me, I don't know if it's a missed opportunity. I, I think the other things, yeah, there were missed opportunities around it. I mean, if, you know, because you're trying to write a story and you're trying to bring old viewers back, new viewers in, blah, 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 you miss a couple of things, whatever. I don't know if it was a missed opportunity because I think she was just supposed to be, uh, well, I can't really say anything, but uh, like if they had a plan for her later on, like if her plan was always to come back in The Last Jedi, then she can't be Nines because Nines has to die. You know, right, yeah, she that's, can't. that's a good point, yeah. Yeah, so I, I don't know if it's, if, if now if the plan was just to have her as this cool character in this one movie, which I don't think they would do, especially after, you know, Darth Maul and Grievous, and you had the prequels where they would pop up for 15 minutes in one movie, and everybody was obsessed with them, because they looked awesome. I don't think they're going to make make that mistake again. I think characters are going to come back, they're going to recur as much as they can. A traitor was something completely different. And that he ended up being the actual Boba Fett of the whole thing. It ended up being being Nines, yeah. not Phasma so much. But that, that's why I don't agree it was a missed opportunity. It would have been cool if that was the case. But I don't think that was a missed opportunity because I think she'll get her revenge in The Last Jedi to some yeah. degree. I'm definitely hoping. Uh, real quick, total random thought. Do you think that that metal is – because here's the thing. So we've heard that her armor – is actually made from one of the Emperor's old cruisers. So he had those yachts, basically. He had them on a ton of different planets. One of them was on Jakku, actually. Uh, and, and they all have artifacts and, you know, Sith things in them. And they're, they're, I'm talking about the, the chrome ship that Darth Maul flies on in the first movie, I think it's in Tatooine, in uh, The Phantom Menace. So that is where her armor comes from. So that armor is meant to withstand space and you know fire and the friction of coming into an atmosphere and things like that. Do, bottom line, bottom line, do you think that spear can stand up to lightsabers? Yes. Oh, I, I hope her, so. I think everything about her can, and I think there was a rumor in a, one of our scavenger scums, I'm not sure which one, I think number like four, three or four, we talk about, there's a rumor that the stormtroopers, I think they're on Dubrovnik at this point, which is uh, Canto Bight, I believe, whatever, wherever they are. Yeah. And stormtroopers are around, and they start running, and they run past Phasma, and they go, the Jedi's coming. And we don't know who what Jedi they're talking about, but they say the Jedi's coming, and they run. And apparently, the shot, this rumored shot that never came to fruition. So this, I think this was in the uh, Stockholders video. Okay. Sure. So this grain of salt right here. But... They say that a lightsaber shine, you can see the light on Phasma's mask, a reflection of a lightsaber light on her mask. And I think, yeah, I think they're going to go down. It'll hit her. She maybe blocks it with her, you know, and, and I think you're right. I think we'll be able to penetrate that. Uh, yeah. That'd be cool if that's where her armor came from. The question now is how do you cut that armor and make it into, into Yeah, armor? it would be pretty difficult, right? I mean, yeah, that's Star Wars. Yeah, it's Star Wars. I mean, they could figure out a way to do it. But bottom line, that spear, she needs to be going like, oh, like, I've been, you know, watching Game of Thrones, like, and the way the Doth Rack can fight with their spears. And one of my favorite uh, fights in cinema ever is in Hero, the first fight in the water where the spear guy is fighting the hero. Yeah. Damn. That is incredible. If they could do something like that with lightsabers, like, I'll lose my mind. I'll lose my mind. The only thing with that is, and you know what I just said, notwithstanding, I guess, but we've heard a lot that Phasma's going after Finn in this movie. So if she's going after Finn, is there even an opportunity for her to go up against a lightsaber? Um, hmm. That's an interesting question. Is there an opportunity for her? I think so. I guess the, 
the easiest answer and explanation would be when Finn meets back up with everybody. Um, we're getting the vibe that 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 fight on the planet Crate is maybe the uh, the second act. It's the big fight. So yeah. maybe they all kind of show up there. That could be very interesting. I mean, if you're ta- you're talking about that shot, that could be from the Battle of Crate, right? Where the Faz- where Phasma says, or the, she is told that the Jedi is coming, or whatever. Yeah, I think I've said this. I think it's um, a reverse Empire Strikes Back, where they're all yeah, separate at the beginning. Yeah. yeah, and they come at the end. And yeah, I think that could be. It. The other thing, though, is would you rather see Phasma and lightsaber, or lightsaber and lightsaber? See, the thing is, I think we're going to get lightsaber, lightsaber, no matter what, because Kylo Ren. You know what I mean? I think they're positioning him to be a big bad. I- I personally want to see... The, the thing that excites me about these electric weapons is that we're just getting more melee combat in general. So, mm-hmm. you know, look, people are going to be storming... I, we've heard the rumor that the whole, epi- the whole episode 8 ends with Luke arriving to, to meet Snow, Snow face-to-face on the, uh, whatever, the clip or whatever that shit is. So, man... If he has to cut his way through a ton of people using weapons like that, that would be really amazing. And the lightsabers themselves, I think that what's interesting is you needed a ton of them in the prequels simply because they're such an overpowered weapon and the Jedi are so overpowered that, like, you, the only way to like, do it is to have, like, Sith and people in red lightsabers. And so, you know, you look at someone like Grievous or you look at, uh, you know, Dooku, even Ventress to a degree, the only reason they have those weapons is to have a match for the Jedi so that there's an interesting yeah. combat. If we can find a way, maybe the spear is the new way, to have something that will stand against them, that would be terrific because it means we don't have to get crazy with the lore and, and, and finding ways to get lightsabers in people's hands. We can just have weapons. So, to me, I think that's even more interesting than lightsaber. And you can still have a light, lightsaber being like this illustrious, crazy thing where people are like, oh, it's a lightsaber. You know what I mean? So I don't think it detracts from it. They need to show it. They need to show Phasma's weapon. And they need, they need to show it's a little bit clumsier than a lightsaber. That's what they, they need to just like uh, hint at. Yeah. Why would you prefer a lightsaber to this? Well, yeah. And I think that the lightsaber is just, I mean, A, it's more badass. Uh, oh, yeah. Plus, like, you know, the spear is cumbersome, right? Like, you have to have that whole thing the whole time. The lightsaber retracts and becomes something this big. So that's already more convenient. You know what I mean? Yeah. Oh, I can't wait for I, I would love to see Phasma go toe-to-toe with Rey. I think if anything's going to happen, it'll be Phasma and Rey going toe-to-toe because of Rey's connection with Finn. That's what I think. Yeah, I can buy that. I'd love for her. You know what would be fun is if there was another Jedi. If there was somebody else in the mix that had a saber that she could kill. Because I think the thing is this. Like, you just, I don't see a scenario where, the problem with matching her up with Rey is that you know Rey's going to win. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, he, there's no way that they're going to give Phasma that win when yeah. Kylo needs that win. Like, Kylo, I think, if anything, it would make sense for them to fight and Kylo to put her down. You know what I mean? As it were, like, really mess her up. I think that's where they're going with it. It, it wouldn't feel as right if you give that to Phasma. You know what I mean? No, I, yeah, no, I totally get it, but I don't know how this movie ends. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know I, where it's going. And I don't know either, man, but I, but I think we need some Jedi fodder. Like, that's the thing. Like, maybe Luke's temple is those people are all hidden. Maybe they're not gone. You know what yeah. I mean? They're hidden. And he's I like, think it would be... You know, I thought episode nine, you know, would be cool if it had that Lord of the Rings kind of grand finale, Return of the Kings type thing going on where it's just one big epic battle, lightsaber, blue, green against red, just a whole onslaught. I 1,000% agree with you. I think that... And I, you know, maybe just as kind of an uber fan, I've always kind of thought that's the the way you want to do it. That's the way to do it. Like, if anything, this trilogy, what this trilogy is really about is setting up the future of Disney Star Wars forever. You know what I mean? So I think they're trying to get back to a place with more sabers. Like, why wouldn't you? It doesn't, it doesn't make sense to not go there. You know what I mean? So if that's the way they want to do it. And it's funny you mention that because we're going to talk about um, episode nine in the video we're about to do for my channel, but we're going to kind of 
talk about that too and the implications of nine because nine is so important to me yeah. you know what i mean it's, it just is so well yeah nine setting up you know right now they say there's not going to be a 10 11 12 but how can you not have a 10 11 12 ever at some there's point you gotta have do it. yeah they, they would be so dumb to not do it in fact if anything, what they're probably thinking about is not so much do we go um, 10, 11, 12, do we start over and go 1, 2, and 3 again? You know what I mean? Like, are they going to do a 9? You know, because the thing is, it's all in threes, right? And so it's a first, yeah. second, and third act. And they're probably thinking, well, this trilogy of trilogies was a successful model maybe we need to do that again and, and they're maybe setting up the lore for the future of that which could be cool man you know like i got i got a real problem with that Ooh, that's a topic for another video that's yeah. <laughs> what's I mean, going on. Think that's about kind it. of a cool idea if they go back yeah. and, and then they call it like star wars episode well, like season two episode one right they could or they could call it because it was the skywalker saga right yeah this could be something else yeah there could be a reason why they they made it known as the Skywalker Saga. Dude, call it and the they, Red Saga and have Kylo Ren just be the hugest big bad of the whole thing. That would oh be my god, that would be Oh, dude, awesome. you know, crazy look, because we're going to do this in another video. I can feel it coming. But just real quick, what if, like, the upbringing of Ben becomes the prequels for that trilogy, for that series? Oh, what that would be cool. Me mm, like you. That would be cool. I would be down for watching that. I think most people would. Uh, by the way, have you have you been reading Side Act? Have you been reading uh, Battlefront Inferno Squad? See, I bought it, and I have been pretty busy, so I haven't started it yet. But you know what? Actually, I was looking for something to do tonight to relax. It's how crazy my life is now. I have to think <laughs> hard about what I want to do to yeah. relax. So uh, to get away from the internet hate, I think I will start Inferno Squad tonight. I've been. Uh, I'm a few chapters in. I didn't have. I haven't had much time to read either, but it's uh, I've been enjoying what I've been reading so far. It's good thing, so. yeah, I like the, the the Battlefront Twilight Company. I thought it was an underrated book. I haven't and read it, yet, but people say it's incredible, especially like what Vader does in it. Oh, way Vader! That was when you read that book, you know what you're getting in Rogue One. You're like, okay, Rogue One Vader scene better be on par with this. But yeah. this book, I like this book's a little bit better because the characters you follow are obviously going to play a part in the video games, so they kind of yeah. have a bigger place in the canon, whereas Twilight Company, I've never heard of them before, and I haven't heard of them after, but it's a really, it's very highly underrated book, I think, that, that original Battlefront book. Mm. I'll definitely have to add this, but maybe I'll do a one-two punch with it, knock it out, and maybe do some traveling since that might be a good idea. I tell you what, though, I need to finish Inferno Squadron before Battlefront, which is in November, oh, yeah. right? Yeah, you have like five months, three months, four months, you're good. Yeah, <laughs> Yeah, it's cool. It's it starts uh, right at the destruction of the first Death Star. Spoiler. Which right. is the place you want to start. That's where we wish yeah. Episode Seven started. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Like we're like thirty years. Come on, man. What yeah, happened? Just, come on. And then it's so funny. Like the the cutaways were driving me crazy in that movie, right? Who's the girl cutaway? You know what I mean? Like that. On. That's yeah. That's one thing that drives me nuts too. Is that's more like that's not te that's not. To me, that's not good storytelling. That's just teasing me. For no reason other than to tease me. Like if you they if they acknowledge that later on. So exactly, it's not good storytelling in and of itself, but it's yeah. it's okay in the context of the big thing. You know what I mean? Except that they never went back to it. If they never go back to it, we'll rage. Yeah, that's the problem. Like you have to go. Like why bother asking that question? You could cut that line out, and the movie suffer, doesn't suffer at all. Like there's no loss there. Here's an interesting that, thing. Let's throw this crazy theory at you. So. The big questions going into episode seven were who is Ray, who is Kylo Ren, and who is Snow. Those were the things that kind of were the, you know, what's going on. So we got Kylo Ren, we got that answer right away. And the first movie was really about yeah. him. Okay. I think the second movie is going to really reveal about her. And I think the third movie really reveals about Snow. So, do you think that that's possible? you think that we're going to get those answers in that kind of work? Yeah, I think here's the thing, though. I think the second movie is about Luke. Because it's The Last Jedi. And Ryan Johnson said that... Ryan Johnson said The Last Jedi is singular. He said that. Yes. We, but, we don't pay attention to that. So, but the only thing is, is Rey The Last Jedi? I don't know if she is. I think it'll... 
I think it's going to be more about Luke, but she'll be the side to Luke, so we'll probably learn a lot of, of her through Luke. Does that work? You know what I mean? Yeah, like that. yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, my thoughts are it's about Luke, but it's not Luke's movie. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. Because remember, Hamill said that thing, and then Kathleen Kennedy was like, "Oh, she tried to like kind of shut him down and be like, no, he's very important.' But even she didn't say it's his movie. She said he's very important to this yeah. movie, which he is. But dude, like, I'm just saying, like, if I were them, I would still try to use Luke Skywalker sparingly, and I don't mean screen time. I mean like story time. So even though he's on screen, like it was like it's like Yoda in Empire is the best way I can explain it. Like he's on screen a lot and does a lot. But he's not, like, guiding the narrative. He's a part of the narrative. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yes, it could be raised. I mean, if, I guess, why wouldn't you focus on the new characters, too? They are your bread and butter at this point, And they're the ones that are going to keep the franchise going after. The, like, Right. Anytime they feel like they need to go back, they have Ray and Finn to fall, yeah, Kylo you know to fall back crazy? on. Everyone's thinking Ray is... What if Ray doesn't make it out of set eight? You know what I mean? Like everyone's thinking, oh, you know. And you know, to be fair, I could, it's logical, right? Like she's the future. Let pass that baton. But what if Luke is the last Jedi at the beginning of this movie, and he's the last Jedi at the end of the movie? Because they kill another person. Like they take one more protege from him. They take one more person who tried to touch with the light side, and they are gone. She works on him in the first half. He finally starts teaching her, and then she dies just like everybody else around him. And so, you know what I mean? Like, I can see a place where it, that is such a crazy character, you know, trial and tribulation. Like, to I just think with. there'd be a fan outrage <laughs> if that happened. There would definitely be a fan outrage, but Ryan's kind of already said the movie's going to be shocking. You know what I mean? He's kind of yeah. already, he's already laid the seeds for it. Our, Disappointment and something you and I talk about even off air, where we're like, "Well, yeah, this might be the film we deserve, not the film we want." You know what yeah. I mean? Like, I think you know, you and I think we're gonna. It might be our favorite Star Wars film, but I could see a lot of people it being like passing, like Attack of the Clones, Phantom Menace as their least favorite. You know? Yeah, I mean, if it fundamentally changes things, I mean, look, we know people can't handle fundamental change especially when it comes to Domino. But uh, in all seriousness, people can't handle <laughs> change. They, just, they don't do well with it. So um, I can see a, a place where there's massive disappointment and people hang it out to dry. But I think that, to be honest, like they don't need another safe play. Like They don't need another episode seven. It would be almost better for the brand if they did piss a lot of people off but made like a great film. Yeah, in my opinion, because like they're working in a rare space, they don't need. They're going to get revenue. They don't need to worry yeah. about that. They're going to get revenue. They're going to make equals and equals of profit. So that's not really their concern. Their concern should be way macro, way big picture. You know what I mean? And uh, I think you know Kathy Kennedy, Bob Iger, all those people over there are smart enough to realize that. I think. Oh. Definitely, yeah. and I think they're smart enough to. Do you think they're smart enough to keep Captain Phasma mask on or off? Oh, see, it's coming off. But remember when we saw we, we heard the thing where Pablo Hidalgo said after the Entertainment Weekly photos that he's like, "Yeah, you'll get a picture of Phasma with her mask off, but it's not going to look like that, dude." I'm calling it right now. She's going to look brutal, brutal when they pull that thing off. Like maybe no hair, scars bags around her eyes, you know what I mean? Like, I want her to look almost skeleton-like, you know what I mean? Like, scary. That's what I think we're going to get. And I think that that's, like, when Vader's helmet came off, and we were like, ew. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I, I think that's what they're going to go for with Phasma. So you think Phasma's going to die, and that's the reason they take the helmet off? Or do you think she's just going to no, take it off? Like, look at my face when I kill you, bitch. Ew, exactly. Well, that, and I think it might get blasted by a lightsaber. What if she took a saber to the face? You know what I mean? Yeah. Or, it, or it sliced part of her eyes and she can't see through the thing anymore. She has to take it off. I think that would be pretty intense. Because remember, she's not about taking the mask off. She was like mad at Finn because he took the helmet off. Yeah, I know. So there needs to be a reason for her to take it off. Yep. That's, yeah. I'm really excited. I, I think Phasma's going to live up to what we all hoped she was going to be in The Force Awakens. I think she's going to be that plus some in The Last Jedi. I hope I'm not wrong because it's... Also, there's so many characters that could easily be, be wrong with this. You might just show up in two scenes, kill a few people, and that'll be that. But I'm 
I'm looking forward to seeing some more of her. I love Stormtroopers, and so I just, you know, I'm all about seeing more and more of those things going forward. Oh, yeah. She's great. She's well-designed. I, I want to see more of her, too. Like I said, I want that spear fighting sabers. That's what I want. Yeah, that would be totally cool. One final thing. Do you think there's a possibility that she is 100% on board with Snoke, or do you think there's a possibility that maybe she'll be like, whoa, maybe I shouldn't be with Snoke, and she'll turn, and she will just... She won't be a resistance. She won't be First Order. She will be Phasma. Bounty here's, Hunter. Here's what I think, and now we're going to go down this rabbit hole, because it actually <laughs> points, it points to something I've been thinking a lot about. I think that if... Let's just say, as a speculation, that everyone that was on the eclipse after aftermath and goes out into the unknown regions let's just assume that all of that those people meet up with snow okay and snow basically builds atop the lines that were already established a new version of the empire so all the people that were loyal to the emperor which come on and phasma is rocking the emperor's shit as her armor She's a fan girl of the Emperor. She was a big old fan of she. Okay? So, if she is that, and if there are a lot of people like Pux, right? His dad was hardcore Empire. So, if all of these people are hardcore Empire people, and Snoke's actual motives are different than he is leading on, and he is manipulating this Empire loving group of people and they realize that, then yeah, there's a chance for a split, which would be interesting. And I think that the Praetorian Guards are there for more than just the Jedi. You know what I mean? Like, Snoke's smart, and I think that he's also going to be guarded because he kind of looks weak, right? He looks like a weak person. Uh, whatever's ailing here, it ain't good. There's no cream's going to fix that. So uh, he, he, might, he might do that. He might put a rift in uh, the First Order, which would be interesting. Yeah, I would totally be down on that. I think, you know, any, if there's a third sect that shows up just to cause some trouble, I think that would be totally cool to see. And yeah. this film and next, we just create more conflict. We've always had good and bad, good and bad, good and bad. But now it seems like we're getting in this gray area. No, yep. you know, but it'd be nice to see a third party come in there to try to stir the pot a little bit. I agree. I think we need the Sith. Bring the Sith back. You Do, okay. I mean? I, I just did a video with Andrew about the Sith. Do you think we'll ever see them again, or are they done? Yeah, we have to. No, we have to. Like, the thing is, they were they were gone for thousands of years, right? There was, it had been a thousand years before anyone had seen the Sith. That's where we open up with Phantom Menace. You know what I mean? The Phantom Menace is the Sith. It's the thing that we thought was gone, but it's been around. And, like, dude, I, I think especially because what we'll do is we're going to go back to early situations with him and how some old Republic stuff, I think you will see something within that series or a show or whatever that explains why the Sith will never die. I mean, they are immortal in a different way, like through the Krons, you know what I mean? Like, they're, they're yeah. teaching to pass on, and I don't think that we've seen the last of the Sith for sure. And maybe that's where you start with 10, 11, and 12. That's what these go. Yeah, the return of the Sith. And that, you know, you don't do that for another... You know, you wait 20 years to do 10, 11, yeah, 12, exactly. and you have to sit return. Right. Go go hard. Like, you know what I mean? Like, you can do the same thing and have the Sith come back, and maybe not. it's not just two this time. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah, I would totally be down for that. Uh, but, I want, yeah, so just wrapping up, I want to see more Phasma, more Phasma in their sphere. And maskless Phasma... I'd like to see her as an alien, but I don't think that'll happen. I think she's just going to be... That's alien. interesting. That would be really cool, actually. Yeah, if she was Yeah, alien. I just don't think it'll happen. But then again, she would be alien and female? That would be crazy, because they're... Domino! Famous, that's what I'm saying. They're famously sexist and racist in the Empire. So, I mean, yeah. for her to be able to overcome that, she's got to be a badass. Well, Filoni said season four of Rebels is going to be some female stormtroopers. Yeah, I think that uh, they're trying to go away from that a little bit. I mean, yeah. look, they've already they've already introduced a bunch of females. I mean, we've got, uh, what's her, Governor Price, who was a yeah. part of uh, the Thrawn novel as well. Yeah. Um, and they, it's funny, I think they're going to go away from the sexism thing, because they have great, they have great female emperor, empire characters. I mean, like, you know, we're talking about Battlefront, right? So yeah. that character, um, Sienna, from Lost Stars, Lost great, Stars, yeah. great character. 
So I think they're going away from that, but they're, it's funny because they're actually still going to hold strong to the alien racism thing. Yeah, which they should. Which they probably should, yeah, because, I mean, they actually... Uh, Zahn does a great job of explaining that in the book. They give a yeah. concrete reason for why the four worlds distrust alien worlds, and it's pretty dope. Dude, did I tell you that I, I talked to Timothy Zahn in, uh, in Ohio about the Zahn book? No. Oh, okay, my bad. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I... It was at Origins Game Fair. It was the last day of Origins, and he always goes there. It's a pretty small con, but he's been going there for years. I was surprised that he went, you know, after kind of getting back into Star Wars. But uh, I got an anthology by him, which I'm kind of looking at to see if I have it here. It's a dragon. Talk about dragons here. Yeah, right here. Um, this thing right here, which he was one of the writers on. So I got it, and I got him to sign it, and I started talking to him about it. And uh, maybe we should do another video some of the stuff that he says. Okay. Pretty, yeah. Maybe we'll wrap this one up here then and we'll... Sorry to tease you guys. <laughs> yeah, well... Subscribe to the Rebel what? Stone Podcast if you want more. Who's the girl? By the way. That's so true. All right, Josh, thanks a lot. Where can everybody find you at? Find me at the Den of Nerds and don't be mad at me when I don't agree with your opinions about nerdy things. That's all. Yeah, and if you do not like the look of Domino, check out his channel. He has a great video on that. <laughs> nope. I'm James. You can find me at Pets Fina everywhere. Thanks for watching, guys. May the force of others be with you. Always. Hey, scumbags. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to give us a thumbs up on our video. As always, please subscribe to our YouTube channel, Rebel Scum Podcast, for all the latest videos.